Look at Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. You say, what can we glory in? That we know God. That I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness. Man, we have a really kind God. Very nice. God's a gentleman. The Lord is very kind. He's very merciful. He's very patient. I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Turn, if you would, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. And let's look at verse number 26. First Corinthians 1, verse number 26. I like this portion of Scripture because this, this gives me hope. This portion of Scripture, those of us that, you know, we're not the smartest, we're not the best looking, we're not the tallest, Okay, Brother Myers is my, what, are you six foot? Barely. That means he's 5'9". Um, my brother's 5'11". That means I'm 6'7". Okay. But I like this portion of Scripture because it really puts, it puts, puts everything into perspective. Verse 26, for you see, you're calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called. You know what God is saying? I've given people gifts, but they're glory hogs. And he said, so what I have to do is I have to take not many wise men. By the way, God wants to use gifted people. He gave us the gifts. But we don't know how to use them sometimes. We abuse the gifts he's given us. But he says, not many... He said, for you see calling, you're, you're, you're calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But verse 27, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. We tried to get Rick Martin a couple years ago to come, come here again. He, he was here one time. Okay. Um, God has used him in a, in a mighty way in the Philippine Islands, in a mighty way. And they've started hundreds of churches, hundreds of churches. He has a church of several thousand people. I don't know if he weighs 120 pounds. I mean, if he was up here, I, I would look like Hulk Hogan, okay? I mean, he is very thin. He's, he's short. But God has used him in a mighty, a mighty way. What's he say? Look on. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. See, Pastor, I'm not very smart. You are a good candidate to be used by God. See, I'm not very intelligent. And my, I stutter when I speak, and I really I get nervous when I talk. You are a good candidate to be used by God. So I just seem so insignificant as I look. And we shouldn't compare ourselves. We have a tendency to do that. That's sort of in our human nature. When I look at all the other 10th graders or 11th graders or all the other freshmen in college or all my coworkers or all the Christ other Christians, I seem like uh, at the bottom of the totem pole, I seem like I'm so uh, just, I'm, I don't have it. You are a candidate to be used by God. He said, verse 28, in the base things of the world and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Look at verse 29. That no flesh should, say it, class, glory in his presence. None of us are going to be of a glory in the presence of God. So why are we glorying down here? 
but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Verse 31, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. We want to do that tonight. We're going to give a report. And by the way, we should be excited if Zach has a blessing. But we also be excited if the church is blessed. Because we're all, we're the body, the, the, the church, uh, or the, the Bible says we're one body. Okay? So if Zach is blessed, if Anthony's blessed over here, we're all blessed. Okay? You, we're, we're all part of the body. And, and so we want to do that. Let's look at another portion of Scripture. Just look over to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And many of us can quote this, but I think it's appropriate for us to read it tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Still awake on the patio? Good. Whether therefore ye eat, oh, or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the, what class? Glory. Glory of God. Everything we do, every endeavor we, we put our hand to, we should do for the glory of God. One more portion of Scripture, Acts 14. Acts 14. Then we'll pray and be seated. Acts 14. Acts 14 is what we're going to do tonight. Paul and Barnabas, they return back to their home church to report about what the Lord has done. We do this every year. We'll do it again tonight. Acts chapter 14, verse 21. And when they had, uh, verse 21 of Acts chapter 14. And when they had preached the gospel in that, to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord and on whom they believed. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Ataliah. And thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended, that's where they came from, to the grace of God for the work which they had filled, fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed. They what class? They rehearsed all that God had done with them. And by the way, we're going to do that tonight. I'm, I'm going to, some of you probably got Brother Board's email. They had their first church service this morning. And I have, I have the email here. I'll read part of it. They had their first church service. It was exciting in Cambodia. And so we'll, we'll rehearse that a little bit. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Father, tonight as we come together and we just glory in, Lord, what you've done in individual lives and, of course, families in our church, might we constantly be reminded that you get the glory, might we give you the praise, might we give you the credit, might we give you the honor. We sow some water, but you give the increase. And might that be a very strong characteristic of our church. Whether, therefore, we eat or we drink or whatever we do, let's do it all to the glory of God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Let me say, and I've reminded our church before, but it's good that I say it again. We at Pacific Baptist Church are blessed beyond mine and your obedience and competence. Let me say it again. We at Pacific Baptist Church are blessed beyond my obedience, your obedience, and our competence. Okay? And I, I, I'm, I'm saying tonight is a church corporately. Okay? I'm not a... By the way, and I'll mention it tonight... Only 1% of the churches, and big doesn't mean everything. Okay, I'd rather have 100 people in a church living for God than 1,000 people in a church that are worldly and fleshly. 
Now, I'd rather have a thousand people that are living for God than a hundred. Okay? But only, I think it's less, and I have it actually in my, something I'll read tonight. I think it's less than 1% of the churches in America have a thousand people in it. Now, of our type churches, it's a lot less than that. You know, when you say, what are our type churches? The churches where we don't appeal to the flesh. Okay, we are, we're, there, there are some churches that they might call them um, uh, sort of like entertainment churches. They attract people because of entertainment, maybe a rock band, okay? Uh, they, they, they do things to attract. Let me just say this, okay? Don't, don't, don't get this wrong. An independent fundamental Baptist church, it's not that attractive. At the surface, it's not attractive, okay? But... There's depth to it, and it's very attractive, okay? At the surface, because, you know, we, whenever the new trend comes in, I know a few of the young people do it and a few of the older people, but everybody doesn't hop on the trend so that when trendy people come in, they go, oh, I feel right, okay? We're, we're sort of we're sort of old-fashioned, okay? And, and sort of, because we're old-fashioned, people come in, and, and some people, they just, they just, they can't, they can't, they can't, they don't, they don't like it. But, um, but we are a growing church, and we want to give him the glory. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Let's not get proud about God's blessing. Let's give him the glory. Remember, humility is recognizing that God and others are responsible for our accomplishments. And in just a few minutes, when these men come up, uh, let's, let's, let's be encouraged that we're in a church where we believe we have God's blessing, but let's give him the glory. Then the Lord has blessed in many areas at Pacific Baptist. Let's give him the glory. There's lives that have been changed. There's people that have been saved. There's people that have been baptized. There's marriages that are doing well and there's just many, many, many different blessings. There's different ministries. There's a new church. There's, uh, now we have nine families that are going to Southeast Asia, not including the, single, the singles that are going. Um, the Sutricks emailed me this week, Tom and Sue Sutrick, and they said, Pastor, we're going to go to Thailand with Jay and Heidi to, to, to work with among people. And they're trying to get their daughter to come to Bible college here. Pray for her. She'll probably come visit us sometime maybe in the next few weeks. And so uh, these, are, these, are, these are exciting days. Um, Brother Board, let me, let me read uh, his, I'm not going to read the whole email. Let me read part of it. He said, Pastor, nice to hear from you. First service went very well, I feel. We had 32 people in attendance. By the way, that's in, in, in Cambodia, a lot of churches have been there for years and they don't have 32 people. That's exciting. Uh, he, he, he does mention that I think one of these guys had gotten saved this week. This was more than I had hoped for. We have eight more who had promised to come, but we're not able to make it. He says, we do not have a children's ministry as of yet, so we are not bringing in neighborhood kids. That w he said that would be chaotic right now. We only had four young children who were here because they came with their parents. He said, I'm fine with that for now. In a few weeks, we will open a Saturday's children's ministry here as well as, 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 hope, uh, as hopefully one in Stung Mian Jay, about 15 minutes from here. At that point, we will look for the cream of the crop amongst those children, and those who are truly serious will let them come on Sundays or bring them, or bring them on Sundays. That is the plan for now. It could change once Brother 2 is here. I think Brother 2 is going to be there in December, and that's exciting. Is that right? Anybody know December, okay, so Brother 2 and Deborah and the children will be going there in December. Um, brother two is, when, when Brother 2 is here, we have two more work, we'll have two more workers who can help. I feel like once we have them here, he will be able to handle the potential influx of children. That's exciting, and we're excited about that. And so when we, when we think about what is, God has done, let's glory. Let's, the, the, the Lord has also enlarged our vision. Let me, let me, let me, let me say something. We, we all want to be a part of something that has vision. Okay, um, I remember I was, I was driving home from my, my in-laws one year, and um, I was listening on the radio, the local radio, and they were talking about the vision of Sierra Vista, the vision, and they are talking about how, what we're doing to bring job development in the city, 
And by the way, I was, it was very interesting. And it, man, I'm like, man, I'd like to move to Sierra Vista. You say, where's Sierra Vista? It's on the other side of Tucson. Okay, you got to drive. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, all of, you know, retired people are going. I'm not retiring yet. But um, you, you drive out the 10, you pass Tucson, and you make a right, okay, once you go through, you know, a bunch of cactus, lizards, and rattlesnakes. And you make a right, and then you drive another, like, 40 miles. And then it's this city, it's, it's, it's a military city, too. It's a, there's an Air Force base there, Sierra Vista. But, but, you know, the thing is, what they're doing, they're trying to cast vision. Now, I don't want my personal vision. I want God's vision. It's exciting that we're in a church where God has given us vision. Okay? Now, I, I, I would stay serving the Lord if my church didn't have vision. But I'll tell you this. There's something about going to a place that's going somewhere. And I want to say this. I am not a visionary, and I don't know what you call it. I'm not a dreamer. I'm just a pastor trying to do the best I can. But for some reason, God has put vision in this place. Let's give him the glory. Then the Lord has given us favor in many areas. And I'm not gonna, we'll let the guys talk about that type tonight. The Lord's given us favor in our building, and that's exciting. And then, as I just said, we have a bright future. Look around you, okay? I want you to look around. Look for the color gray on people's heads, okay? None, none, no hair, okay? None. He has two right there. Let me see. Let me see. None? For the rotten eye? None? He doesn't have anything to look at. I'll tell you what. I'm excited about being in a young church. This, you say, what do you mean young? Just a lot of young people. A lot of teenagers and single adults and young couples and singles that are going to get married someday. Let me say that again. Singles that are going to get married someday, you single guys ought to say amen or owe me or sue something. Look, we have a bright, we have a bright future. I just, just today, I, I, it's something that, that I think the Lord really put on my heart. And it's, it's, it's going to be exciting and challenging, and I, I'm not going to talk about it tonight. I think it's going to help our church and the multi-generational vision that God has given us like nothing has ever helped. Just something that I, I begin to look decades into the future, and how that decisions that we make now, now, are going to help the future. Now, by the way, they're not always easy decisions, but we think they're Christ-honoring decisions. Say, Pastor, what's the message tonight? If you look at the clock, we're going to land the airplane right now. Let's glory in the Lord. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Let's